This is the Gregorian calendar, the calendar which we use to count the time, to situate our events in some place on the time. It's arbitrary, like most of the rules which we use. In the calendar, we have the year, the months inside the year, and the days inside the month. And we know a day has hours, hours has minutes, and minutes has seconds, and so on. Let's see a month. The week starts on a Sunday and ends on a Saturday, runs from the left to the right. When a week ends, another starts below this week. On the schedules, the morning is in the top of the page, afternoon on the middle and the night on the bottom. But to me, it doesn't work that way. At first, my week runs right to left. The first day of the week is Monday, and the Saturday and Sunday are together, forming the weekend. And the next day isn't on the line below, but just after the Sunday, all days in a line. My schedule begins at the bottom at, and ends at the top. I think that because the sun rises at the bottom and goes to the top, but I don't know. I'm always taught that way so far I can remember. As the days, years run the same. So I think when people think about the past, they think to the left. But when I think about the past, to me it's on the right. When I was in graduation, a teacher said on class that fishes were arising more or less in Devonian. I didn't ask what Devonian meant, if it was a long time ago or not, because I had not the entire picture of the age of the earth. So it was just information with no context. I give you an example. I said to you, We will go walking to the concert, but you do not know what distance between the place we are and the concert. Sometime after we started to walk, I say to you, we walked one kilometer until here. What it means to you? You don't know if the concert is uh, two kilometers from the beginning, we walked half of the distance. If it's 1.2 kilometers, we are almost there. But if the total distance is 5 kilometers, mm, we still need to walk a lot. After my graduation, I had not sure what I want to study until I started to read about paleontology. So, I can say that I was adopted by a paleontologist in a museum and he taught me about paleontology. I haven't a master degree or something like this, but I do studies in paleontology now. One of the first things he showed me was this, the International Chronostratigraphic Chart. It is the calendar for paleontologists and geologists to count the time. And when said that this calendar runs bottom to top, and right to left, I had no problem with it. It makes sense to me. Here, the same size doesn't mean the same time. While Adian, the little square on the right, has 600 million years, the big square on the left has just 541 million years. We can see the numbers at the right side of the columns. Paleontologists barely use the first column on the right. It has no much fossils. It is called the Precambrian, and it is an informal name. It runs from 4.6 billion years, or total length on this journey, to 
541 million years. The major division is the eons, which are Adian, Archean, Proterozoic, and Phanerozoic. Let's focus on Phanerozoic. It has three eras, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. Paleozoic is divided in six periods, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, and Permian. Mesozoic is divided in three periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Cenozoic is divided in three periods, Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary. But in paleontology, we use more commonly the epochs. Paleocene, Eocene, and Oligocene, inside the Paleogene, Miocene and Pliocene, inside the Neogene, and Pleistocene and Holocene, inside the Quaternary. To see the duration of all of this, just look at the right side of every column. To finish, I would like to show you some important points in the evolution of life and point them on the chart. Not precisely, just till we have uh, some idea when these events happen. The first evidence of life is dated from 3.7 billion years ago in the Adian. The first metazoans appeared in 1 billion years ago. The Diacaron fauna is here, and this fauna was formed by amazing animals, which had not shells or another kind of protection to their bodies. At the beginning of Cambrian, we have something called the Cambrian explosion, when the first shells and bones are found. The first vertebrates, placoderms and ostracoderms, appear at the late Cambrian. The first sharks and their relatives appear at the late Ordovician. The first Osteictians appear at the late Silurian. The first terrestrial plants appear between the late Ordovician and at the beginning of the Silurian. The first terrestrial animals, probably myriapods, appear at the late Silurian and the beginning of the Devonian. The first tetrapods appear at the Devonian. The first aminotes appear at the late Devonian. The vertebrate diversification, when the synapsides, anapsides, and diapsides appeared, happened at the late Carboniferous. The first mammals appear at the late Triassic. The first birds appear at the late Jurassic. The first angiosperms appear at the beginning of the Cretaceous. The extinction of dinosaurs occurs around 66 million years ago. The first hominids appear around 7 or 8 million years ago. And finally, the first Homo sapiens appears around 400 or 500 years ago, according to the last discoveries. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.